<laughs> probably wondering how I'm laughing is because we've tried to film this intro about a million times so I'm just gonna get straight into it here we have the McLaren 750s um, a McLaren have let me borrow this car to give it an on-road review as you guys probably know I drove it around Silverstone track and I've owned a 765 LT Spider in the past so I thought it would be good to get my hands on the 750s and give a normal user review as the road is where this car is going to be spending a majority of its time. The 750S is a significant improvement of the 720S. It may not look like it because the design hasn't changed that much, but to that I say, if it ain't broken, don't try and fix it. But what they have changed is 30% of the car, a lot with the internals, and a little bit of the design elements. For example, you get thinner headlights here. This model has the black surrounds, however, you can get it with Cully Bolt. Cully Bolted? body colored surrounds um, there's more uh, ventilation down here for cooling in the car and aerodynamic efficiency from the side the car looks pretty similar to the 720s however when you come around to the back of the car you can see this extended spoiler in um the honor of uh, the 765 lt spider or the 765 lt lt standing for long tail just means a longer tail which it was done by the spoiler however to put a spanner in the works as this toyota yaris drives off um this spoiler on this car isn't actually the same spoiler that's on the 765 lt it is slightly smaller in terms of surface area so i thought that was a fun fact um the rear also has more ventilation for cooling and i really like how the lights kind of just blend in you can't really tell they're there unless the car is on you also have this new exhaust system which in is insanely short the exhaust is literally like this big the whole system and it sounds a lot better than previous models so take a listen Whilst we're at the rear of the car, the engine in the middle of the car, which you can kind of see through there, has had a few internal changes. So now the car produces 30 more horsepower, 30 more newton meters of torque, and um, also it weighs 30 kg less than the previous car. So uh, in individual sections, those things don't sound significant, but as a sum of its parts, that makes a massive difference compared to the 720S. Also, compared to my 765LT, this car is way more comfortable thanks to a more comfort focus rather than track focus suspension system. It still uses the hydraulic system, so that means no anti-roll bars. What McLaren tends to do is change hydraulic fluid to keep the car flat at all times and stop it from pitching and diving when accelerating and braking, which makes makes it an exceptional ride experience. Also, this car is in spider form, which means you can take the roof down. It's actually the fastest folding convertible roof you can buy today, and it folds in just 11 seconds, and it folds at speeds up to 32 or 33 miles an hour. I haven't been able to push it further than that because I don't want to take the risk, but it just gives the car a nice open air experience. Yeah, the seven uh, series McLarens, the design was quite um, controversial when it came out. I remember people not liking it, and I always thought it looked like a UFO, in, but in like the good sense of the word. And I think that keeping this design language for the 750s which is essentially just the facelifted version of the car i think it really exemplifies how far ahead of the its time the design was when it first released it looks gorgeous it looks beautiful and of all the supercars on sale now this is probably the most supercar-y looking i would say you compare it to 296 the 296 uh don't shoot me the 296 sometimes looks more like a sports car than it does a supercar but this is undeniable and also in supercar fashion, McLaren makes sure your doors always erect, or go up, I should say. But I like erected doors. I think it just is a way better experience. All in all, I think uh, this is a great looking car. It, it is just immaculate. I'm not sure about the interior, but I think we should get started on that now. So come round to this side. Cameraman Ashraf probably doesn't know how to open the door. And a few people, if you've never been in a McLaren or seen a McLaren before, you may not know how to open the door. Let me show you. You take your hand, you slide it in, you caress the door handle here, and you push it it's like a little button. And again, it erects. Would you like to erect your door, sir? You place your hand in there. Other side, other side, sir. Closer, other, to your left, to your left, sir. There you go. <laughs> Push and then erect. <laughs> Brilliant! Hey, now you know how to open McLaren doors. Anyway, we're in the interior now. Uh, this car is kitted with the wonderful bucket seats or colloquially known as the P1 seats as the design is very similar to that. Inside the P1, they are comfortable, but if you have to get something out of your pocket, it is pretty much a myth. I will show you now. I have my wallet in my pocket. Wallet in my pocket. <laughs> and um, because the bolsters are so much, 
it, oh, it's my phone, not my wallet. It's very inconvenient, but um, it keeps you held in and it keeps you uh, comfortable when you're riding around the track. But the interior of the 750S is very much the same as the 720S, albeit with a few tweaks. So now you have the rocker switches from the McLaren Artura to uh, change your drive mode and change your chassis mode. I think it's really good because you can actually do it without having to take your hand off the wheel, whereas before you used to have to select something here. So now you can just bang these rockers and change the modes. So you can go from uh, comfort to sport uh, to track on both. When you do that with a powertrain, it changes the mapping of the engine. When you do that with the chassis, it stiffens up the suspension, but it also uh, kind of takes back a bit of the assistance the car gives you. And if you want to take it all off, you uh, compress ESC off and put the car in dynamic mode, which I wouldn't advise as this car doesn't actually have a limited slip differential. It does all the um, torque vectoring via the brakes. So um, you just have to be like mentally prepared for that if you're on the limit. Trust me, I've experienced it. <laughs> uh, also, now the Iris system has been updated. Iris is McLaren's infotainment system. So it now supports Apple CarPlay, which is a nice bonus, especially in this vertical layout. Um, McLaren haven't supported Apple CarPlay for a while. So it's nice that they've brought that back because it just means that you can drive without having to touch your phone. Oh, a helicopter. I hope that helicopter isn't landing here. Um, the interior of McLaren's is very focused is the word I'm going to use. And when I say focused, I mean, there aren't really that many creature comforts. You don't really have any storage anywhere and it's very simple. I would say. So uh, if you're buying this car and you're expecting a Ferrari-esque interior, you are going to be uh, dramatically disappointed. However, it's so focused, it gives you um, GT3 RS vibes or Porsche vibes, albeit even more focused. <laughs> So the McLaren 750S, like I said, 750 horsepower, that 30 horsepower and 30 torque boost um, plays a significant role uh, coupled with the shorter gear ratios. As we see now, as we proceed up this uh, horsepower hill, as I like to call it. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's because the roof is down, but that felt ridiculously fast. <laughs> McLaren's build quality has gone up a significant amount. So it doesn't make those rattles. It doesn't have those squeaks that the 720 used to have. Even my 765, at times would just be a bit frustrating because it never felt like it was worth what I paid for it. Whereas this car feels a, more, a lot more better put together, a lot more sound and a lot more focused in terms of McLaren understanding that they're making road cars and not track cars. I just think McLaren have done a great job in creating what is essentially a 765 LT touring. And that also means that when you want to turn it up a few notches, you can do. And it will behave exactly like you would expect. Uh, one slight criticism with the McLaren 750S, and all McLarens in fact, is um, their ridiculous fuel efficiency. So this car has a 75 litre tank. It uh, came to me on a full tank. I've driven it around a little bit. Um, I'm just above half a tank, but at half a tank, you'd expect the range to be 100, 150 miles. Uh, it's telling me 75, which uh, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't give you much confidence if you're going on a long trip. So launch control. Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> hey listen for 300 grand that is the closest you can get to what it feels like to drive an sf90 or a bugatti people say that this is competing with the 296 i feel like this is in its own league because for this much money you can't get many things 
this performance. Because Active Spoiler is pretty cool, so right now it's lowered. When you press the arrow button, it pops up. And then when you hit the brakes, it pops up even more to stop the car from pitching forward even more and increase stopping power. So uh, yeah, it's really nice to watch in your mirror. It just means that sometimes you brake and you can't see what's behind you. The 750S is exhaust. Now that it's been brought closer together, you get more high pitched sound, which just feels again, more rewarding. I think that's probably the theme of this car. It's just way more rewarding to drive. That exhaust just always sounds aroused. And now uh, you're here now. Jeez. This car is incredible, but it's not without some negatives, which I'll get onto now. The first negative you'll encounter as a 750S owner is all the smart Alex that think that because you have a McLaren, you're going to have issues. Um, I had my McLaren for just under a year. My friend had his McLaren for just over a year. And my other friend has had his McLaren for a while. About four or five people I know have had McLarens with zero issues. There are the odd occasions where there have been problems on older models, but I feel McLaren has started to get a grip on the build quality issues. Speaking of build quality, come check this out. You close the door, I feel like that shouldn't vibrate. I know all of it is made in uh, the pursuit of performance, so that's light weighting. So they do the panels in a way to make them as light as possible and fix them to the car as light as possible. But sometimes it just makes it feel a bit hollow. Also to the untrained eye, uh, they'll think that you just bought a 720S and you'll have to explain to them every single time, no, it's a 750S which is annoying. Now, uh, despite the new exhaust system providing a finer sound and greater performance, it just looks a bit weird akin to a USB-C port. And the final issue you may face, or uh, I don't want to say negative, but take it how you will, it's not a cheap car. So at £270,000 without options, the 750S Spider is quite dear. You compare that to uh, cars in its uh, caliber, and then you start to understand why they went for that price range. However, it feels like this car could be a little bit cheaper. With options, you're looking at well over £300,000. Uh, you get into MSO paint, you get into uh, rims, you get into bigger brakes. And uh, this car, which lacks all the carbon, even though the parts are still carbon, once you start getting them in exposed carbon, the price again skyrockets uh, massively. Do I think that this car is a worthy upgrade over a 720S? Which many times have I've said, it's probably peak supercar that you can buy right now for value for money. I think this car, it's actually there now. The upgrades just make it more usable and more livable, which is a nice experience. Even compared to my 765 LT, after driving this for a while, if you're not prepared for a track focused version, or if you only want one supercar, this is a good option from McLaren. It's like the perfect supercar with a few issues, but what is a supercar without issues? Now, a few people have said to me, how does it compare to a 296? I've driven the 296. This is a lot more visceral. The 296 is a lot more uh, toned back and dailyable. And um, you may be also wondering why I've parked near the hybrid system. Well, the 296 is a hybrid and this manages to outperform it without a hybrid system. I'm gonna get flamed in the comments for this, but when it comes to supercars, I feel like this is the last true supercar on sale. When I say that, I mean, because it hasn't got any hybrid system, it's ultra light, performs very well with that electro hydraulic steering rack and also the looks. Anyway, uh, that's my video. Let me know what you think of the 750S. I have fallen in love with McLaren all over again, despite always bashing McLaren in my previous life. I've now learned that these cars are meant for one thing and one thing only, performance.